first, I got this little thing I ordered. I'm gonna show you. 30 CO2s. And I think they were only, it was only like 30 bucks for this. I'm gonna link that into the description because it's such an amazing deal. I've been to bike shops that sell one of these for like eight bucks. I find these the most difficult rides just to sit at 200 watts for, I don't know, four hours, five hours. I'm just sitting down and looking at the watts. I find these hard as hell on the mind. I would rather be doing intervals, but this is what my coach wants me to do. I'm gonna show you how I do one of these long rides. <laughs> I just dropped my ear pods, my Samsung Galaxy Buds, dropped them. You can see the mark there and the marks there. I found the case in one of them, but I lost the other one. And I want it looks like I'm gonna have a hard time finding it here. I was pulling out my camera, my GoPro, and I accidentally pulled out the buds. You think we can find it? You won't even believe it. I left those ear pods in the hotel coming here and I called the hotel and they shipped them to me. I got them yesterday. And now this is what I do. Dummy. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Can you believe that? Look. <laughs> Guys, I did not plant that. This is legit. This is legit. This is legit. Oh, that's crazy. All right, so I got 40 minutes on the clock. Getting this done. Orange trees. 30 kilometers done. Feeling pretty good. Average watch 209. My average heart rate very high. 141. That's because I haven't trained in the last six weeks. That should be about 120, 125. So we're about 15 beats high, which is fine. It'll come down over the next month. But here, take a look at the stats. Just rolled over 100k. I'm at the point where I want this ride to be over. I feel okay, but these long steady rides I think are so much more mental than anything. Uh, it's a beautiful rail trail we're on here though. Look at this. Boo! That's awesome. Shorts and a t-shirt too. Can't beat this weather. I got 23 degrees. Bam! Love it. Absolutely windy as hell. I got 30k left and I'm ready to get home. I got 119.6 kilometers on the clock. I can't really escape the wind. My watts are 203. Let's get home. Ah, oh, I just can't wait to get home right now. Let's do this. All right, let me change, get ready, and I'm gonna give you my tips on how to do a 150 kilometer ride. As soon as I get back from the ride, I like to do some hip and core exercises. I won't do too much today because it was a hard ride. I'll do some exercises, and then I'll do a really big stretch focusing on my hips because my hip has been bothering me. Wake up! How you Step doing? <laughs> doing pretty good. How you doing? <laughs> this is the bedroom of the house we rented. We're here until uh, next week and then we have another house that we got for just over a month. And then we haven't decided where we're gonna go. We might go Texas, Tucson, California. 
We're gonna sit down, think about it. As soon as we know, we'll let you guys know where we're going. But I came in my room here. It's got a nice thick carpet pad where I'm gonna get on the floor and finish off my exercises. I think one of the most important stretches for your hips is this one I'm doing here. The runner's lunge, I think it's called. And I really try and hold this stretch for at least a minute. I try and get that psoas muscle by going in like this, really just reaching over and feeling that stretch all through here. Okay. You're shooting a the video there, honey. What are you up to? So I do the runner's lunge and then I go into that foot grab where I do the quad and and then I go into this hamstring, hamstring stretch, and then I do both legs. So then I move on to just sitting cross-legged like this, and then just moving around. And I really wanna feel the stretch in the side and all the way down into my hip. This one last one I do for my hips. And I pull, I put my foot on something like this, keep my knee bent, cross my legs over, lean back, and push this leg. That really stretches the hip or you can pull it forward to stretch the glute. All right, stretching done, let me give you my tips on how to do a 150 kilometer ride. Now this is the most important part after the ride. I love coffee. I got something else that just came. All right, let's open this up and see what we got. Insta360 camera. I got this for the group ride coming up in a couple days. What I'm gonna do is wear this helmet cam and it gives you a 360 view. So when someone attacks, I attack, anything going on, you're gonna have an amazing view. I can't wait to test this out this weekend. It's gonna be an awesome video for you guys coming out. Keep an eye out for that video. Tip number one, plan the route. This is so important for many reasons, but most importantly, is because you need to know when you're stopping and where. If you get three hours into this ride and it's a scorching hot day and you haven't had water or you're out of food, it's gonna hurt. So you need to know when you're stopping and where to make sure you don't run out of water or food. Also, it helps make sure that you're gonna complete the ride. If you don't know the route and you get a little too close to home, it's very easy to cut the ride short. Tip number two, start early. I know for myself that if I don't start early and I push it back and I say I'm gonna leave at eight and then I don't leave it ten, until 10, it makes it much harder to finish the ride because knowing you're gonna get home late. If I leave early, I'm on the road at 7 a.m. I look down, it's 9 a.m. I already got two hours done. I got the rest of the day ahead of me. Amazing. Tip number three is do, do the ride with someone else. These long, steady rides are so hard when you're by yourself. You're just counting time, basically. But if you can go with someone else or a couple of guys, a couple of girls, a group ride, it would be such a big help. So if you can plan this long ride and you got someone that you can do it with, I think that's a great tip. Number four, food and water. You should be aiming to have at least one bottle an hour, and this is depending on the temperature. If it's colder, you can get away with a little bit less. If it's hotter, you're definitely gonna need more, but one bottle an hour is the standard of water or mix, and at least one piece of food an hour. If you're doing higher intensity, you're probably gonna want more than one bar an hour. It's about 100 to 300 calories an hour of carbs only. That's about 20 to 50 grams of carbs. That's what you're gonna to wanna to aim for depending on the intensity of the ride. This is very, very important. I'm gonna tell you a quick story here of something that happened to my brother and I when we were new cyclists. I was only cycling about a year. He just started. We do this four hour ride and we stop about halfway through at a Tim Hortons and I say, you should get some food, you should get some water. He's like, nah, I don't even know to this day why he said no. I wasn't experienced myself at the time, and if it was today, I would have said, hey, take the food, take the water, but because I didn't know what I was doing either, I said, ah, he must be okay, he must know what he's doing. We're 30 minutes from the end of the ride, and he literally is crying. He has to pull over, he's like, come on, man, I got, I'm like, get the car, I'm like, I can't, he's, and I'm like, dude, we're right there, I'll just push you, we'll get there. He said, no. And he's like, you have to get the car. I can't do anything. I can't go anymore. I, literally, he's in tears. And so I go get the car. I'm driving back and I can't see him. 
I'm like, where is he? So I parked the car and I start walking. The guy's laying down in a ditch. That's how messed up he was from not drinking or eating. And I thought I was gonna have to take him to the hospital. But as soon as he started eating and drinking, he was fine within the next 30 minutes. That shows you how powerful food and water is if you don't have it, especially on a hot day. Tip number five, check your bike. Check the tires, check the air pressure, check the drivetrain. Just make sure your bike is in good working order. If you're in the middle of the ride and you have a shift cable break or your tire's old and it splits or it gets a tear in it and you can't fix it, you will be waiting on the side of the road for hours. It's happened to me. You're 60 kilometers into the ride. Someone has to drive 60 kilometers to get you. It ain't a good thing, especially if it's something that could have been prevented by putting a new tire on or changing the shift cable or charging a DI2 battery. I've had that happen to me a couple times as well. Give the bike a good once over and you wanna do this a couple days before, not the night before, because if there is something that can't be fixed and you need to take it to the bike shop, you wanna have enough time to do that. This one is another one that's gonna help you get through the ride, this is tip number six. Prepare mentally. A long, steady ride is just as hard mentally as it is physically, and in some ways it's harder mentally. If you're doing this ride by yourself, or even if you're doing it with other people, just to go out there and be in the saddle for five hours is difficult. To just understand that there's gonna be times that are tough, and there's gonna be times where you feel great. Anyone doing this has had faced the quits, we call it the quits, we're in the middle of a ride and we're just like, I don't wanna do this anymore. Doesn't matter what level you are, the best in the world or you're just starting out, we all face the quits. So it's just about talking yourself out of it and just preparing that you're gonna to get to that place and when you do, you gotta push through it and go. Tip number seven, keep moving. All the little stops when you stop at a light and you lose two minutes there, you stop and you go, oh, let me fix my thing or let me check my bag or whatever you're doing. Ooh, I gotta use the bathroom again. All those stops add up. K2, I have, it shows paused time. And I have that on my main screen. And it's shocking to see how much time you lose from stopping or pausing your Garmin. It's absolutely astounding. So just remember, keep on moving because those stops add up. Tip number eight is comfortable clothes, very, very important. If you're wearing bib shorts that don't fit or you're wearing a top that's too tight or too loose or you have shoes that don't fit, very important. Your feet start hurting midway through the ride or they start going numb, it's gonna suck and it's gonna make you wanna quit the ride a lot sooner. And you're not trying anything out, anything new. Don't try out a new saddle or a new pair of shoes or a new pair of bib shorts on a 150 kilometer ride because you don't wanna get in the middle of the thing and realize you've made a mistake. Tip number nine, I'm sure we've all been burned by this, no pun intended, sunscreen. I've been burned many times. I remember I went to Tucson one year and my, sun, my skin hadn't seen any sun for a while and I'm like, oh, I was busy, I was late for the group ride and I said, oh, okay, I'm gonna go get this sunscreen on my way there but because I was late, I didn't get it. My arms and neck were burnt for the whole week my arms were just singed. They were blistering. It was terrible. Make sure you wear your sunscreen. Last tip, and this one is not for everyone, but for me, if I'm out there by myself for four, five, six hours, I like to have something to listen to. A little bit of music, podcasts, audiobook. Some areas it's not as great because you have to be listening for traffic and it can be a safety issue. So please use this at your own discretion. I don't want anyone getting hurt out there because they're listening to music or anything like that. Just use this one at your discretion and remember safety is the most important thing out there. No one wants to get hurt. I don't ever want to see anyone getting hurt. It's just, we don't want that. So that's it guys, my 10 tips for you. I hope you use these and I hope they help you. I absolutely love cycling. And if you love cycling, I'm sure you would love my channel. So please subscribe. I have a goal of getting to 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2021. And I would absolutely love your help. If you do subscribe, please comment and I will thank you personally. If you like the video, please like it and comment. Tell me what you think. These videos don't happen without you. I love to hear your feedback. I love to hear from you guys. So please comment. And that's it guys. I'll see you on the next video. I'll see you soon.